everybody! Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show! We are closing in on Easter, so we thought in celebration we would create something this week that you can stash some treats in. So not a great big basket, a little mini basket instead. <laughs> These cute little baskets are just big enough to hold some jelly beans or some of those pretty little foil wrapped chocolate eggs or maybe a Kinder Surprise or something like a pile of your favorite treats. You can plunk them down next to the place setting at the kitchen table or fill them up and hide them somewhere for someone to find. I love playing with little things like this and I love creating little hunts for people. You can use a solid colored yarn for this. You can use your pure scraps. This is definitely a scrap project. Or you can take the opportunity to fish out some of those pretty little variegated yarns that you have in your stash and make up some of these little baskets with them. Frequently we get asked the kinds, the specific kind of yarn we've used for a project. And I typically just say, whatever you can find, as long as it's acrylic or as long as it's cotton. But I really liked these particular uh, variegated yarns and I found them a long time ago. So I'm not going to say that you're going to be able to rush right out and find them. But they are Red Heart Comfort, both of them. And they were a variegated yarn that I found several years ago, but I think I still see them from time to time at Walmart. Um, it's a size 4 variegated, it's acrylic, it's one of those big balls of comfort. Um, but it's not a super thick yarn, so it's not as thick as the typical comforts um, as far as a weight is concerned. But it's such a pretty colorway. I love this blue one and I love this one with the pink and the peach and the yellow and the white. Um, so I thought they were just perfect for this little project. And as you can see, I have a ton of it left over. So this really is a scrap project. And before we head to the craft table, for all of you who were kids in the 80s, do you remember a toy commercial on uh, just ahead of cartoons in the mornings that would have gone something like, a task, a task, a flower making basket. That's all I remember. If any of you know what I'm talking about, can you please for a comment down below because it's driving me crazy and it's it's been running through my head the entire time I was making these. <laughs> okay, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up some cute little miniature Easter baskets together. In order to make our little miniature Easter baskets, you need a very small amount of yarn. This is definitely a scrap project. Approximately 25 grams or 34 yards of a medium size for, in this case, acrylic yarn. You're also going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using today is a 4.5 millimeter, also known as a 7 in the US and the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all this together, we can get started. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. And remember, you're going to work all of your stitches over top of your short tail. Into this cinch circle, we're going to work 12 half double crochets. So 12 half double crochets into your cinch circle, and that is row one. Once you have 12 half double crochet worked into your cinch circle, grab your short tail, and cinch it up nice and tight. We're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet and your half double crochet might be kind of pointing down a little bit so don't don't miss it and if you're having trouble sort of seeing where it is you can just count backwards. You should have 12 stitches all the way around. Row two, we're going to chain one. We're going to half double crochet in the same stitch that we've just chained one out of. So if you pull up on it you can see that little space there half double crochet right into that spot and now you're going to work two half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. You'll be left with a false stitch at the end and when we get to that I'll show you what to do with it. Once you've worked two half double crochet into each stitch around you'll be left with this stitch. That's the false stitch. 
Um, it's That's sometimes what it's called, but it generally sits right below the chain one, or the chain one looks like it's coming right up and out of it. And of course, if you do a quick count, you'll have 23 half double crochets. So the one we began with, plus two in every single stitch all the way around. So we want 24. So we're going to work a single, so one half double crochet into that false stitch, and then we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet we made. So we're not really worrying about turning chains or anything like that here, but we do want to have a nice closed in circle. One more row of increasing. We're going to chain one, pull up so you can see that little space there. You're going to half double crochet into it. You're going to half double crochet once into the stitch next to that. And now we've got a little repeater pattern for the rest of this row. You're going to work two half double crochet into the next stitch, and a half double crochet once into the next stitch. So now the pattern is two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way around. You'll get, you'll finish your last set in this stitch right here. That will leave you with the fall stitch, and I'll keep up, I'll catch up with you when we get to that part. Once you get all the way back round to the beginning, you, if you do a quick count, you should have 35 stitches in total. So that's where we're going to put stitch number 36. We're just going to half double crochet once into that false stitch. That'll be our 36th stitch. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first real half double crochet. And you should have 36 stitches all the way around. That is it for the increasing part. Now we're going to work a little ridge. We want our basket to have a little flat bottom, so we've created this part. Now we're going to work this little ridge bit. We're going to switch to single crochet briefly here. And we're going to work our single crochets around the outside of each post of our stitches. So we're going to chain one to begin row four. And then to work around that post, because we want to be able to identify it, you're going to take your hook, come from the back side, through the stitch right below where you chained one, so it's sticking out facing you, and now you're going to push it back through the stitch next to that. And there's the little post of that stitch popped up around your hook. Now you're just going to single crochet normally around it. And that first one can always feel a little strange, so take your time. And now we've single crocheted around the outside of the post of that stitch. So the next one, you come right through from back to front through that stitch, front to back through the stitch next to it, there's the post. And you just single crochet Try to keep your grip loose on your hook. I find that helps for me. From back to front, front to back, there's the post, and one simple little single crochet. Now, you should have 36 posts, so you'll have 36 single crochet all the way around in row four. And if you find it helps to kind of count as you go, do that. Otherwise, just patiently work away at working single crochets around each of those outside posts. That is so we can create this nice little ridge and our basket will sit flat when we plunk it down and fill it full of treats. Once you get around to the beginning of row four, your last single crochet worked around your last post will bring you to this point. So here's our little chain one. We're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that or that single crochet, that first one we made, and you should still have 36 stitches all the way around. And now a nice little ridge that will give our bottom of our basket something sort of solid to sit on. We're back to half double crochet now. We're going to work the upper part of our basket. We're going to chain one to begin the row. We are not going to work into the same stitch that we joined in. We're going to actually work our first half double crochet into the stitch next to that. So the first half double crochet of the row goes into the next stitch. We're going to work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way around, including the false stitch, and that should keep our stitch count at an even 36. So we want to maintain a stitch count of 36. So half double crochet all the way around, and I'll catch up with you. 
Your 36th stitch will be worked into the false stitch. There's the little chain one, and this is the top of the first half double crochet of the row. We're going to join with a slip stitch to that stitch. You should still have 36 stitches all the way around. And we're going to repeat this row twice more. So you chain one to begin, work your first half double crochet into the next stitch. So not the same stitches joining the stitch after that. Half double crochet in every stitch all the way around, including the false stitch. Skip the little chain one and join to the top of the first half double crochet and then repeat once more. You should still have 36 stitches in every row. Okay, we've completed rows five, six, and seven. So your little basket is now three rows of half double crochet tall. And now we're gonna put this cute little outside ridge on it. So it's sort of the top of the basket that turns down. And this is a lot easier than working around the outside or the back of the little post that we did before. So to start row eight, we're going to chain one and we're going to work half double crochets around the front of each stitch, around the front post. So this is really easy. You just have to pull your stitch apart and you can see the spaces on either side of it. So you're just going to put your hook from front to back through that space and bring it out through the space on the other side of the whole stitch. So we're not worrying so much about the top part. It's the whole stitch that we're going to work around. So you half double crochet around the whole front of the stitch. Next one, prepare your half double crochet from front to back, back to front, pull that whole stitch up on your hook and half double crochet. Might take a little bit of, of getting used to, so just take your time. You wanna make sure you work a half double crochet around the front of every single stitch from row seven. So you'll still have 36 stitches at the end of this row. But what we're doing is creating this really nice outside edge that gives our little basket more of a baskety kind of look. <laughs> so go ahead, work a half double crochet around the front of every single stitch. You'll still have 36 stitches and I'll see you at the end. When you get back around to the beginning, there's the little chain one that we began the row with. We're going to join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet. And that's it for the basket part. So you can snip your yarn now. Fasten off and weave in both of your ends. You should probably still have one, unless you worked over your tail, you might have one down here. And of course you've got this one. You can weave your tail in underneath that ridge. And as soon as you've done that, we're going to shape our basket a little bit. Once you've woven in all of your tails, we want to take row eight and roll it down gently over top of row seven. So row eight may have closed in the top of your basket a little bit. That's okay, because we want to use some of that tension. If you feel it's really tight, you can sort of stretch it out a little bit. But we want to use some of that tension in row eight to kind of hold it in place as we roll it down over top of row seven. And this is going to give the top of our basket a nice finished looking edge. So you should have something that looks a bit like this. There's a basket with a little lip to it. So once you've rolled down row eight, it's time to make the little handle for our basket. So grab your hook and yarn and we'll start that. To make our handle, we're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 28 to begin. Once you have 28 chains, run your fingers along it to make sure that you've flattened it out. And we're going to begin half double crocheting in the second chain from the hook. So skip the first one, find the second one. You're going to half double crochet in that second chain and you're going to half double crochet in each chain all the way back to the beginning. You should have 27 stitches all the way across your little handle when you're done. Leave yourself a bit of a long tail because we're going to sew one end down with that yarn. And then cut yourself another little length because you're going to sew the other side of the handle down with that. You can just put that one aside for now. Fasten off. 
You may wish to weave in that short tail before we go any further. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Now you're going to decide which side you like for the top of your handle. So it doesn't matter which side you choose, just pick a side that you like. And you're going to pick up your basket, take the side that you like as the outside of your handle, and flip it upside down, and place it on the inside of the lip of your basket anywhere, it doesn't matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew just on, so there's the, out, there's the inside edge of the lip of the basket. We're just going to sew it down just underneath the lip of the basket. And we're only going to work a couple stitches in the bottom short edge of our handle here. So there's two, and I'm just going to go over them a couple times, just so I know that little handle's not going to come out. There we go. If you flip it back up, it should be sitting on the inside of the edge of your basket. And we're just going to make a small knot at the side of the handle. And then you can take a moment to weave that tail in. You can weave it up and down the back of the handle or you can weave it inside your basket. Um, weave it back and forth a couple times and then trim any excess. Now you're going to take your handle and be sure not to twist it. You're going to flip it up and over to the opposite side of your basket. So this is just, you're just going to eyeball this. Whatever looks like the opposite side of the basket is where you're going to attach the other short end of your handle. Same thing, you're going to sew it in place underneath the lip of the basket. Thread up that other little piece of yarn you, you cut um, earlier and you can just knot it at the side of the basket. So you can either knot it onto the handle before you start sewing or you can work your first little stitch, make a knot. I like to tie things at least twice. You can weave in this little short bit of tail in a moment, so don't worry about it. Make sure you haven't twisted anything here. And then just like the other side, work a few more stitches into the bottom edge of that short bit of the handle, trying to keep it on the inside edge of the lip of the basket. Work a couple stitches on each side just to make sure it doesn't want to go anywhere. And then knot at the edge, fasten off, or I should say knot your yarn and weave in the tail. Weave in that little short tail too. You can trim any excess that doesn't belong. Once you've got your tails woven in, you are all done. And there you go. They're so cute and they're all ready to stash full of treats and maybe hide on someone. <laughs> we hope you had fun making these little mini baskets along with us this week and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week everybody. Bye!